Hello everyone, Alex here from warnoffkeys.com and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use continuous deployment to an Elastic Beanstalk environment using AWS Code Pipeline. What we're going to accomplish in this video specifically is we're going to have our very basic express application right here and we are going to create a GitHub repository for this application and whenever we push to the master branch a service called AWS Code Pipeline will automatically detect that and then deploy that application to our Elastic Beanstalk environment without us having to actually manually do that. This will help us speed up the deployment process so we don't have to actually manually upload to our Elastic Beanstalk environment. To get started, I'm going to create an actual repository here. I'm going to name this cd-demo. This stands for continuous deployment or continuous delivery. This will be a private repository. I can then click on create repository. Okay, so now we can navigate into our console. We can navigate into my project folder. We use ls to list all the files here and we see all of our files right here. So now we have to initialize the GitHub repository with a git init. And then we can git add. Actually, we want to add a git ignore file so we can ignore node modules. So going into VS Code, we can right click and make a new file called .git ignore. And inside we're just going to add node underscore modules. This way our node modules folder isn't actually deployed to our repository. So we can close this. We can then run git status. And we see our node module is not actually here because of the git ignore. We can then run git add star and then git commit dash m. We'll say first commit. Going back, we can copy these bottom two lines. And then we're going to push to master. Okay, so everything should be working. If we refresh this, we then see our actual projects right here. Now we need to go into AWS and Inside of the services dropdown, we can open up code pipeline into a new tab here. We then want to create a pipeline and I'm actually going to minimize the console. I don't think we need it anymore. We can enter a pipeline name. Mine will be called Elastic Beanstalk Demo. I can then click on next. The source provider is going to be GitHub. And then we can click on connect to GitHub. Mine will automatically close because I've already connected mine. However, you might have to actually log into GitHub and then once I specify the repository, this is CD demo, the branch is master, and we're going to be using GitHub webhooks, which will basically have GitHub send some information to Amazon whenever the master branch is updated. And specifically the master branch, because that's the branch we selected right here. So we can click on next, and then we have a build stage. Now this is technically optional. However, I'm going to run through this just in case someone is using something that they have to actually build, let's say Next.js. In this very basic express application, we don't actually have to build anything here. We see we have no build scripts, and so it wouldn't be applicable for this exact application, but obviously this is a very simple application and yours will likely have an actual build stage. So with that said, we can go to build provider and select AWS code build. The region will be whatever region you prefer, and then we have to create a project. Clicking on this will open up this new window. We can expand this. We have to enter a project name. Mine will be the same thing, so cd-demo. Scrolling down, here's where we specify the information about the Linux server that we are going to actually have created. This Linux server will then be used to actually build our application, and so it'll run things like npm install to gain access to node modules, and then npm run build to actually build into a production state, and then that output, the actual production state, will be deployed to Elastic Beanstalk. So we can select our operating system. I prefer Amazon Linux 2. The runtimes will be standard and the image will be the bottom one at the moment, which is x86 standard 3.0. We can scroll down and then we see build spec. This will be a file that we'll use to specify what we're actually going to build. I'll show you how to use this in a few moments. For now, just keep it as the default. Logs can be kept as the default and then we can click on continue to code pipeline. That should close this window and then bring us back to our previous window with code pipeline. And we see this right here. So we see successfully created CD demo in code build. We can then click on next and then the deploy. So this is where our code is going to actually live. And we want to select AWS Elastic Beanstalk. We then want to select our application name, which is tutorial demo and our environment name, which is the only one we have. So tutorial demo inv one. We can then click on next and we can go through and review our settings and then click on create pipeline. So after that, you should be sent to a page like this. And this is where we can actually visualize what's happening within our pipeline. So at the moment, the source is in progress. This means it is pulling our code from our GitHub repository. This usually only takes a few seconds. 
After that, it is going to be going into our build phase, which will actually try and build it. But however, this will fail, even though our application doesn't need to be built. The reason for that is there's no build spec.yml file. I previously mentioned this. However, we're going to actually write that and then push that to our master branch. So expect the build to fail here. But if this would succeed, then it would go to deploy and it would actually send it to the Elastic Beanstalk environment and be live to your actual users. So we see the build has failed as expected. If we click on details right here and then link to execution details, we'll be sent to this information right here. These are some logs. The very bottom line says the YML file does not exist. And so this is expecting a build spec.yml file. So we can go ahead and create that. But first let's go back and then let's go into VS code and let's make a new file called build spec.yml. So I'm going to paste this in from a previous project. However, this will be inside of the video description so you can copy it as well. A quick rundown of this. The version is going to be the actual build spec YML version. So this will let AWS know that expect the syntax for version 0.2. So you want to keep this as 0.2. You don't want to change this. The different phases will run the different commands. So we have pre-build, which is anything that happens before building. Typically we want to actually install because we don't have access to our node modules because they are inside of gitignore. So the Linux server that will then pull from the repository needs access to these. And so it'll run npm install. And then we go to the build phase where we would run npm run build. However, we don't actually have a build script. So I'm going to create a very basic one real quick. that will just say echo would have built here. So we can save that. Obviously, if I didn't add this, it would actually throw an error and it would crash the actual build environment. So we want to make sure we have something here. Of course, if you had a predefined build script, you can just use that and that's fine. Next, we have artifacts and this entire section basically just says use all the files that are the output of actually building our application and then push those to Elastic Beanstalk. So if we save this, we go into our console, we can clear it and run get status. We see we have build spec.yml and we modified our package JSON with the script. So we can now add both of those and commit this. We'll say add build spec.yml file and then we can push. Now it's been pushed to the master branch. And if we go back, we should see the source automatically detect that and it should go into in progress like it says right here. Now it has succeeded and this will pretty much always succeed unless something changes on your repo. Going into build, this should succeed as well. And then it'll actually deploy to our application. Now we see the build was successful. And if we go into the details, we then see the logs here and we can actually do a search for would have, and we see would have built here. So this is our actual console log. And we see previously we are running command npm run build. And then going up above, we see running command npm install. And so these are the different phases we see install, pre-build, build, post-build. Post -build. And so you can actually listen to certain things and do certain commands depending on those phases. If we go back, we'll then see the deploy was successful. Going back to our Elastic Beanstalk environment, we can click here. And we see there's no actual change and that's because I didn't change anything. So I'm going to make a quick change in the server. We're going to add a bunch of exclamation points and I'm gonna do the whole process again. Okay, so I push the changes and we see everything has worked. We see succeeded on all three stages. Going back to our website, if we refresh, we then see a bunch of exclamation points. And this was all from an automatic deployment system using code pipeline. And so this is how you're going to actually integrate continuous deployment or continuous delivery inside of your application when you're using Elastic Beanstalk. Thanks for watching this AWS tutorial. If you need help or have a video request, be sure to leave a comment down below or ask in the worn off keys discord, which can be found in the video description. If you want to learn more about AWS, consider clicking on one of the videos you see on your screen now.